loves, welcome back to Bahati Life Apothecary, Bahati Life YouTube channel, and Bahati Life podcast if you're tuning in on the podcast platform. It's your girl, Jessica Alexandria of BahatiLife.com. It feels really good. I always say this every week, but it feels really good to be back here pulling charts for you guys one more time, one more again. <laughs> Gratitude, gratitude is on 100%. I wanna know how you guys are feeling, how you're vibing. I personally am in quite a good mood right now, I'm not gonna lie to you. I had an amazing weekend out on the springs with some really dope human beings and the time that I spent out there was not only refreshing, but it is the most fun that I've had in a very, very long time, in a small amount of time, even though we spent a long weekend out there, and they, those were memories that I will never forget, and I'm so excited for what's to come, even from that trip, even from that venture. And that's one of the blessings, honestly, that Mercury Retrograde does bring. If we allow ourselves to respond to Mercury Retrograde's invitation, invitation, I always have a hard time with that word, but it's invite for us to slow down, to be intentional, to go with the flow, even as plans may shift and change and even as your energy may ebb and flow, that if you kind of go with it where it's trying to flow you, where it's trying to take you, you would be so surprised the blessing that can come simply by detaching, disconnecting, revisiting, revamping, renewing, all of those things. That's the, the real gift of Mercury Retrograde. And if we allow ourselves to do that, we will find that we are repaired, we are renewed, we are regenerated, we are restored, especially with Saturn Retrograde now and Pluto Retrograde right now. Um, yeah, all of these planets are really working to rebuild, rebuild you up from the ground up, from the foundation up. So of course, we're gonna be talking about this in this week's video. I am a little late because yesterday was Memorial Day, but um, yeah. Oh, and I should give a little quick disclaimer too. My voice is a little cricky cracky because I was screaming. <laughs> Literally, we're out in the woods on the spring. It was beautiful, but um, yeah, we were screaming the entire time and my voice has been going in and out, but it is what it is. I can still do my job and I can still talk to you guys. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Yeah, this week, you guys, I have a f few cards that are pulled. And as I sat with them, and as I took some extra time in my meditation, especially having that mental clarity, the messages that were coming through are so groundbreaking and earth shaking in the best way possible. And I'm so curious to hear how this will resonate for you this week. So obviously, we already know this because I was talking about it last week and the week before that video, Saturn is currently retrograde. Saturn is a planet that rules contractual agreements. It rules our structure, our stability, our government, our politics, businesses, rules, regulations. I don't know if I said that one yet. And also Pluto is retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. And that rules our issues or lack thereof with um, power, control, manipulation, regeneration, those types of things, right? Mercury is also retrograde and Mercury is connected to communication and our ability to travel, our ability to send and receive messages, to process and learn information and then share that information, retrograde in the sign of Gemini. Now, as I'm looking at these separate individual planets, I am definitely seeing the breaking down, of course, naturally, of our foundations, our core foundations. This is not anything new, you guys. We saw a lot of this in 2020, and we're seeing it all, a lot of it now. The energy has shifted so that whatever is breaking down, when we feel it in our intimate lives, it feels like it's shaking us into a space of freedom versus shaking down our core our core root and that's a big that's a big shift why this shift is felt in that way is because Saturn shifted itself and it moved itself out of Capricorn so the ways that we have been embedded in the ways that we have been planted and rooted in 
now we've already been pulled up from that and we're in this new space this new environment this new way of thinking and feeling and different friends and connections and you know community that we want to develop that we want to see ourselves flourish in that we want to connect with also on the internet it's who we who our tribe is who we are connecting with and also this desire to want to to help and to be of service and before that you know how the planets were positioned we felt like we had a responsibility and obligation to show up to, for certain things but because of the way the planets are now we are invited this week and you know past past circumstances but definitely this week into not being tied to our obligations not being tied to certain responsibilities by how we think we should um, we are honoring more our feelings, our unique, authentic truth, even if that means that we have to step outside what everyone else is doing, what everyone else has done, our family, our friends, or our own expectations from ourselves. And that can be a little groundbreaking and earth sh shaking, like I said before. So as you know, we have uh, Saturn sitting in the sign of Aquarius and as we have Pluto retrograde in the sign of Capricorn and as we have Mercury transiting the sign of Gemini we have this need this desire to kind of explore but I am getting this vision of someone as they're exploring they still have their hand holding on to something of the past something of value something that's significant to them and as I'm looking at the chart this has a lot to do from what I can tell and from what I can see with Mars sitting in the sign of Cancer. Now Cancer wants so badly to nurture, to nourish, to give, to foster, to be maternal to. It just wants so badly to love and to hold on to the things that it it loves the things that has made it feel so safe in all of these eruptions that have been happening around you this is the place that you feel like it calls you home you feel like when you go there you feel like home however the home environment itself might even also be tumultuous why because mars is sitting directly opposite of pluto pluto is the planet right now that is one of the planets right now that is completely derailing the status quo that is co completely rendering you feeling you know into a feeling of powerlessness am i worth it is this worth it you know do i have control am i losing my control am i losing my mind all of those things all of those feelings those deep dark shadow feelings are emerging meanwhile you're still trying to hold on to the things that is that you love the most and this is why I've been telling you guys, you know, a gentle touch goes a really, really long way. Why? Because as, as crazy powerful as these planets are, we cannot always equate power with, um, you know, brute strength, with brute force, with, you know, forcing our will or, you know, dominating everything or pushing things into a certain way or always asserting your will, your opinion, your perspective. This is really, you're invited to consider the perspective, the vision, the mind, the opinions, the, the, pers the way others might see things because your own horizon has to shift, it has to expand. And if it doesn't, the, the truth of the matter is, is that you're going to be sitting in a cave of your own understanding, of your own minimal education, of your own minimal experiences, and never and, and only be locked into that and never be able to explore, to grow, to expand. And with Jupiter moving through the sign of Jupiter, I'm sorry, with Jupiter moving through the sign of uh, Pisces and Neptune moving through the sign of Pisces, you simply... You know, the planets don't want that for you. They want you to really be almost selfless and self-sacrificial in some ways um, to considering others. Now, as I'm saying that, you guys, I'm not inviting you into a, ter into a space where your territory is being stepped all over by people who are disrespectful, who are inconsiderate, 
who are toxic or draining on your energy. That's not at all what it is I'm saying. It definitely not with, with Jupiter here and Neptune here and sign of Pisces. Pisces needs to be protected. Pisces needs to have boundaries. That's why the very opposite of, of Pisces is Virgo. And Virgo is the first one to say, wait, this isn't okay. This isn't right. I can see it before you can see it. I'm telling you something is wrong. And we got to get rid of it. We got to reject it. We got to destroy it. We got to dismantle it. And Virgo gets such a bad reputation for seeing a problem before it becomes a problem and, and speaking up on the problem before it becomes a problem because the rest of the planets sometimes want to just carry on and go with the flow. But Virgo says, listen guys, if we do that, this is going to turn into a bigger issue and it's going to handicap us further or make this way worse than it needs to be especially with Mercury retrograde. This is where, because Mercury naturally rules Virgo and is now sitting through the sign of Gemini, so it's like all this information is coming through. All of this, yes, we want to explore. Yes, we want to expand. Yes, we want to discover. Yes, we want to be independent. Yes, we want to be authentic. Yes, we want to be living in our truth. Of course we want all of those things. But at the same time, as these little blips kind of come up, we still have to have a really healthy level of discernment. At the same time, we still have to sit with ourselves and ground ourselves and ask ourselves, listen, I understand that this just popped off. I understand that this just was like a bomb that went off in my life that was completely unexpected, courtesy of that lunar eclipse last week, you guys. How about that? <laughs> Literally, that was wild. But, you know, these bombs that are going off in our lives, like, yes, of course you want to carry on and move forward. But the planets, though, the planets. They have so many lessons, they have so many gifts that is that they want to give to us, and in order for us to receive them, we have to be open to hearing their advice and, and listening to them and, and considering things that we normally would not. I will say that there's this erupt, abrupt, that's the right word, abrupt eruption, that's what I'll say. Um, and what this means is that out of nowhere, it seems like out of nowhere, things just kind of break down, spiral, it, like explode. Why? Because Uranus is moving through the sign of Taurus right now. Taurus is what we value. It's what is important to us. It's where we're stubborn. It's where we're resistant to change. Is getting totally revamped as Uranus, the planet of disruption and you know thinking light years ahead, is throwing a wrench into those plans, a wrench into you, a wrench into your mind, a wrench into your relationships, a, a wrench into your career, your finances, your health. Uranus is currently squaring off with Saturn right now, retrograding the sign of Aquarius. Do you see how these planets are almost exchanging themselves? They are completely uncomfortable with where they are sitting, but they are giving their gifts to each other. And with that being said, it again can make us feel so uncomfortable, push us right outside of our comfort zones, right outside of our boundaries. And what I don't want you guys to do is just immediately shut down these this new way of thinking or what someone is saying or this you know, something that should really be taken into consideration simply because you're not used to it, simply because it's not the way that you would have done it, simply because it's not the way that you would have seen it. Again, Jupiter and Neptune are sitting in the sign of Pisces and they're trying so hard to expand your world to the point where you are selfless in considering the feelings, the path, the messages, the prophecies of another. The other meaning, another person, the divine, your angels, your higher self, whomever. There is massive amount of healing that comes here. And of course, the next thing that is that I want to say with this is your inability to control the, uncon the uncontrollable. Things that it is that no matter what you do, no matter how powerful you think you are or that you may actually be, there are things that are going to test your identity with your your beliefs around control. And with that, you that's where there's going to feel be massive feelings of loss. That's where you're going to feel powerless. And this is where people can actually feel even more triggered because not only are they outside of their comfort zone, but they have to admit to themselves, I've, I messed up or they have to admit them to themselves, I can't. I'm powerless in this situation or they have to admit to themselves I need you or they have to admit to themselves that I want more for myself or they have to admit to themselves that this vision that they've based their entire life on is not actually what they want or the career and the work that is that they're doing is not actually what is their purpose the relationship that they've you know chosen that they've chosen and that they've been trying to you know make work is not it 
or them thinking that something is not it actually is it and they have to take a step back mercury retrograde pluto retrograde saturn retrograde revisit renew revamp restore what was broken that they might have done and the ego gets attacked in that the feelings get attacked in that because it says wait i'm perfect i'm not used to um, admitting that i'm wrong i'm used to carrying on and saying fuck it i'm done fuck it fuck them fuck it fuck her fuck fuck me fuck that pardon my french but honestly let's have a really real conversation here so a few points that are standing out to me, you guys, are the fact that, you know, Mars this week is trining off with Neptune, and that is such a beautiful gift because this is where our actions, our steps, are really being intuitively guided if we allow it. Um, this is like riding the wave and swimming with, with, with the wave instead of fighting against it. And definitely when you're working with Pisces energy, you're working with the energies of the ocean here. So just as wonderful and glittering and beautiful as the ocean is, it can really have some powerful forces in there that could just pull you down, pull you out and pull you under. And the best way to do that is to not fight against it because you will exhaust yourself. You will exhaust yourself. It's to lift your feet up, to go with the flow and trust that you will be carried to the ultimate highest and greatest destination for you and in fact i put on my twitter yesterday i believe it was sometimes the greatest transformation the greatest change the greatest lesson comes in not the journey itself the entirety of it like what you expected it to be what you planned it to be or even the destination but the rerouting stage the rerouting process okay next thing that is i'm seeing here is the ability and the potential for real healing to occur this is with the sun sitting in the sign of gemini uh sextile chiron in the sign of aries aries again is is all about i am what do you want and this is where the selfish side is able to come through by you choosing from a higher space this is really what I want to be rewarded with. This is really what I want my life to look like. This is what is really important and valuable to me. And in that, I will take into consideration the feelings, the perspective of another, this path that it is that is being divinely inspired, the sacrifices that is that I'm gonna have to make in order to better my health and whatever the case may be. Venus is then going to move into the sign of Cancer. That's going to be absolutely beautiful because remember how I was saying she really wants to be nurtured. She wants to be nourished. She wants to be filled up in the best way possible. She wants to be hugged and held and comforted. These are things that we absolutely feel like we are gravitating towards, that we are attracting, that we are vibing with. And I want that for every single one of us. Okay, so if you find that you want to do an at-home date or if you want to, you're lounging around in your sweatpants a little bit more than usual. This is currently what I'm doing right now. <laughs> a goddess in her sweats. Don't mind me. Just being extra cozy, comfortable, and a, an attracting magnet. Per use. <laughs> okay. Um, the next thing, too, that, is that I'm seeing is the potential for this strength and empowerment and bone-enriching energy that's coming through with sun trending off with Saturn moving to the sign of Aquarius as I said and this really gives you strength and the word is that's coming through is depth believe it or not and I feel like this is in your connections it's in the people and the presence your presence meaning like when you're sitting with someone when you're talking with someone how do they make you feel the strength in your words the conviction in your thought you know all of those things they feel so powerful and I feel like it's a game changer um, especially you guys, this is going to sound so crazy because I know that the internet is going to be saying the very opposite, but I am looking at the entirety of the chart. I'm not looking at just one transit. Mercury retrograde squaring off with Neptune. Yes, of course, it can be problematic when it comes to confusion and misguided information or mis, you know, things lost in the sauce or lost in translation or, you know, being mentally foggy. But the thing is, is that as I'm looking at the entirety of this chart, I feel like there's a really amazing moment and opportunity here for someone to slip and say the quote unquote wrong thing. Now I'm putting that in air quotes for those of you guys that can't see it, but to say the wrong thing, meaning that it's not what they would always say. And the reason why this is such an amazing, beautiful thing is that so many people are have been really, really guarded 
defensive, big time defensive. You will block blessings, you will block love, you will block abundance by being so defensive and on guard all the time. You are creating stress in your life and you don't even realize it in the effort to pr overly protect yourself. So this energy here with Pluto retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Mercury retrograde, and the sign of Gemini, it makes a person who is naturally and normally defensive, they let their guard down and in that moment, they slip out and say something very vulnerable, very authentic, very a truth that makes them, what they would normally think make them feel weak or be like, oh, well, I've moved on or this, whatever it is that you have, this story that you have played out in your head or whatever it is that you're trying to protect, you slip and you say the quote unquote wrong thing. It ends up, ends up being the right thing. It ends up being healing. It ends up being transformative. It ends up taking your life your relationship, your career, your health, all of those things in a totally new direction simply because you were unarmored for just one single moment. And that's the blessing of these planets. That's the blessing of working with these energies. And you will always find me telling you guys thoroughly what you can actually find, not just the cherry on top of the cake, what is the positive thing on it, all the bad or all the good. I'm gonna give you guys everything. And that's the thing about these planets. And that's the thing about spirituality world. And that's the thing about intention. That's the thing about magic. There's no such thing as good or bad. It just is what it is. And when we're working with energy, you have to at least know what it is that you're working with so that you can make it work for you, not against you. And you guys know I say that all the time on my YouTube channel. The other thing that I'm seeing, again, is the exact pull of Mars opposing Pluto. This is going to be a really tough time at the very end of the week, but it's so mandatory. It's so necessary. It's so needed. And... I just feel like this is this rubber band. It's kind of like how, what it is I'm getting. This rubber band where if you pull something, it kind of snaps back and it hurts, it pinches, it hits you. Um, this, you just don't want to be the rubber band. You don't want to be the person who is stinging everyone because ultimately you're stinging yourself. If you are coming across abrasive, aggressive, um, you know, overly protective, overly defensive. These are things that are not going to play off in for your highest and greatest good. I'm just, I just, just accept it. Just accept it. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. A few information, a few things that are coming through my loves are there's this path. It almost is giving me labyrinth vibes. Definitely with this card right here with labyrinth. It, it's like you're trying to find your way through. You're trying to take a shortcut. You're, it's, you want to have a, a fresh start. You want to have a new beginning, but in a lot of ways, it feels like the new beginnings are things that are forced and maybe not exactly was that you were expecting. And it kind of like pushes you out there and you feel unready, you feel vulnerable, you feel open to attack, you feel completely taken advantage of. You might even feel cheated and lied to, betrayed in some way. But the universe sees is pushing you out there in that new beginning for a reason. But then you're looking at this one area of your life and you're like, okay, when is this gonna be have a new beginning? And this is where you just really have to stop overly examining the divine. Whoa! I said what I said. Yeah, this is when you stop overly examining the divine, the, the, the greater plan of it all. It's not for you to understand every aspect of it. And then the word that is I'm hearing is torture. That would be torture for you to understand every single minute detail of what the divine has in store and what this means and the significance of that. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. What would happen if you let go of your guard? What would happen if you let go of your defenses? What would happen if you walked away? What would happen if you let them go? What would happen if you rested? What would happen if you play? What would happen? What would happen? What would happen? Let it go. Let it go. You only have one life. You only have one life and we do not want this life to be something that is stressful that is beating up on you, that you are beating up on yourself, that you are inviting in tumultuous energy or that you are attracting tumultuous energy or that you are contributing tumultuous energy simply because you refuse to let it, to let it, it, what is it? What is it? You're refusing to let it go. And you're looking for confirmation. You are examining, you are looking for signs 
to make it safe for you to release, to let go, to surrender, to put your guard down. Some of you guys are so stuck on being right, you're making it wrong. And this week is a time to completely disarmor. And to release, surrender, receive in faith abundant blessings, abundant peace, abundant love, abundant gifts. The universe is obviously preparing or has been had in store for you. And that's a beautiful thing. I love you guys so much. <laughs> I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. When it comes to what you can expect and what you can do with this, you guys, the biggest thing that I can say is to release and let go your perspective of what you think it is, what you want it to be, because that ends up being an illusion. Even if you're setting an intention for it, even if it's something that you want, even if it's a goal, it's at the end of the day, it's an illusion, it's a perspective, it's how you're looking at it, what you want it to be in that moment, and you're not seeing it for what it is. And when you see and accept energy for what it is currently, you give it and yourself the space and the chance to transform because you are aware. You're just absolutely aware. And when you see it, okay, this relationship, this career, this situation, this circumstance, when you see it for what it is, you can then take a big step back a big selfless step back, a big high vibe step back and say, now that I can see it for what it is, whatever it is, do I want to root myself in it? Not what it could be, not what you want it to be, not the potential of whatever, but what is it actually, the energy of it actually? Where are the problems? What were the solutions? What was the good? What was the bad? Take a step back and look at it for what it actually is and ask yourself, if I take away, if I wipe away the potential of what it could be and what I want it to be or whatever this vision would would I decide that this is where I want to implant and embed myself and the answer is if the answer is no you got to be out you got to let it go you got to release it you got to you got to be a free bird my loves you got to be a free bird why because life is short why? Because God is good. Why? Because this universe is abundant. Why? Because you are gifted. Why? Because you are worthy. Why? Because you are a high vibe being. Why? Because there are people who need you. Why? Because you are a light. Why? Because there is love. Why? Because this is all that there is. I mean, I could go on and on, but I'm not. Because I want you to sit with it, I want you to examine it, and I want you to open up the key, and I want you to free yourself, release yourself, let go, let go, let go. It is what it is. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week's video. I send you all of my love. Make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.